Hey everybody, it's Romania Black and I'm so excited. I have my nightcap. I'm so ready to watch Heaven Officials Blessing Season 2 of the Dongwa. Yes, we're off to an amazing start with this. Let me tell you. I It's so good to be back. <laughs> gonna be back it feels so weird watching the dong one now after being like off over a year right since it ended but it feels so good so we last left off old old hua chong was man spreading for his gege ready to show him his beautiful beautiful gambling den in the ghost city i just love this demented spirited away i was telling people in the discord i need this to be if we're gonna go full spirited away alternate universe i need hua chong to become like a dark version of haku I need him to become a dragon, please. And Shiling can like hug his little nose. It'll be so cute. I need it in my life right now. But yes, so Shilian has been sent with the Windmaster to go investigate the ghost city and to track down a heavenly official who's gone missing. And I love the Windmaster. The Windmaster um, has become, from reading the novel, one of my more favorite characters. And that's all I'll say. I love them. They're just such a great character because they're so bubbly and they're just like, hey, let's do this. And I just, I love that about them. So we got to meet some characters, uh, Tai Hua. Got to meet him back in the Heavenly Realm. He's the one that fell asleep. And then Jun Wu posed and was like, go, Shanla, go do my bidding. <laughs> As he struck a pose and Shilian was like, sure, I guess. So yeah, that's where we are now. Um, it's going to be so much fun going back through the Dongwa now that I'm pretty far in the novel. So just a warning if you're joining us today on this episode and you didn't watch episode one, um, I have read up to the end of volume six at this point of the English translation um, at the end of a certain book in that volume. And so I'm going to have a spoiler corner at the very end of this episode. We're going to watch the episode, react to it, and then I'm going to talk about just the episode in general. No spoilers. Just talk about Donghua only things. And then uh, at the very end of that conversation, we'll have a spoiler corner where I can fangirl about the novel and where I'm at in it. Things like that. So as far as I know, the mods are still checking out the episode, make sure everything's okay. But uh, I'm pretty excited, y'all, to dive into this season and just see what we get. Uh, here's the thing. I remember a lot of what happened in Volume 2, um, but knowing what we're going to get animated and in what order is going to be kind of a surprise because it's been a while. <laughs> it's been over a year. So yes, but I'm super excited, y'all. I hope you all are too. Real quick, want to give a shout out over to our philanthropy tier over on Patreon to thank them for their support each month for me. I really appreciate it. And to thank all of my patrons and supporters and subscribers on YouTube and Patreon. You all are amazing. And I'm so happy that you decide to follow me and my shipping and fangirling ways because this story is probably one of my favorites that I've read in a very long time. I'd say it's right up there. Right? It's funny. I was at work the other day. We were talking about how many books we've read a year and I've read hardly any at all because I've mainly been reading this book and my channel. And one of my coworkers was like, oh, I read a hundred books last year. And I was like, dang, you had a lot of time. And then she goes, well, a lot of them were smut. And all I could think of was me too. <laughs> Although I have an official's blessing is pretty, pretty tame compared to the other stuff that I've read. But I was like, yeah, I've been reading a lot of spicy stuff too. And they were like, oh, what? And I was like, it's like, what do you tell? I, I've been reading a lot of BL. What have you been reading? <laughs> so I, I'm like, I'm trying to gauge whether I tell a coworker about Heaven Officials Blessing because we talk about book recommendations and I really want to tell her about this, but I'm not sure if she's on board for Don Mai. And so I'm like, do I tell her about it? And then do I just tell her and don't tell her it's Don Mai and let her find out and be like, what is this? And be like, ha ha, gotcha. Do I do that? Or do I just like let her read and figure it out and go, did you know that there's two guys that are into each other? And I'm like, uh-huh. And, you know, I'm just like waiting for the yes and moment. So I don't know. I'm going to gauge it out. She's reading Jurassic Park right now. So we'll see. But anyway, thank you all so much to our philanthropy tier. Thank you to Patreon. Let me give a shout out to Edgar, to Dana, to Alex Cornejo, to Be Happy, to Kiri, to Shimoyama, to Nameless Monster, to Matthew Palfinier, to Ashy Got Snow Bitches, to Zach. Uh, to Sack, to Zachiel, to Destiny Marie, to Trails, to Goob, to Anna, Translucent Men, Sunspots, Eric, Anime Annie, and Tyrone Tyrone. Thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate it. All of my love. So yeah, I'm pretty excited, y'all. As you can tell, I'm pretty hyped up. Today has been a, it's been a busy week at work. And so now's the time to just like decompress and enjoy 
some beautiful Don Mai uh, animated for us in this Don Wah. I'm pretty excited. So we're not going to waste any more time. We are going to dive right in and talk about episode two of Heaven Officials Blessing. And we are going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's uh, do this. Oh, friends. Cheers. <laughs> oh my God. I was pretty much living for this episode because it was great in so many ways. And we'll have the spoiler corner to talk about the spoilery things about it because there's, there's plenty to talk about there. But overall, I just, I, this is such a fun a fun little romp that we're going on with Shee Lian, the Windmaster, and our beautiful himbo, Lan Chan Chu. I'm like, oh my god. So Lan Chan Chu, aka Prince Taiwa, aka uh, Martial God of the East, Wicked Witch of the East, um, we have him in here. And he is, he's such a great contrast to Shee Lian because Shee Lian is so like just not timid, but he's very methodical and quiet and like let's think about this before we jump right in and then launch on two just jumps right in right which you know you would think <laughs> Hua Chong would be like how bold of you sir but I feel like Hua Chong, the only reason he did not punish Long Chan Chu severely is because he's with his Gege. I think Long Chan Chu by association got off easy because he knew that Shilian was there and the Windmaster was there and was like, whatever, fine, I'll throw this martial god a bone, I guess. <laughs> I just, I love the design of the Ghost City Ghosts. I want to say that first and foremost. I love how creative they are. They're all so weird and like some of them have masks, some of them have like talismans, some of them like have ears stuck to them like bows. It's so bizarre and then some look very humanoid like the women. The women look very humanoid throughout which is kind of funny, right? It's so funny. And then I love that when the one ghost girl is like, oh my god, you're really lucky to, you're really lucky to see the ghost king here. The Lord doesn't come here often to play. What? It's almost like he knew you were coming. What? <laughs> In that moment, it reminded me of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where the little mushroom girl is like Betty Boop. She's like, and Shelian is like um, Bob Hoskins, where he's like, he's married to, she's married to Roger Rabbit. Yeah, what a lucky goyle. <laughs> like, I just, I feel like the mushroom girl, like Shelian's like, that's the, that's the supreme ghost. Yeah, how lucky we are to see him. And it's like, uh huh. It just had that Who Framed Roger Rabbit vibe to it, which was great. But yeah, and just Hua Chong looks great. Hua Chong is just looking like he's having the time of his life up there, like smirking his damn ass off for his gay game and being like, yes, he gets to see me in all my glory. Wah ha ha. Which we'll talk about that. It is the question of, is it actually, because um, the Windmaster says if it was the skin of, you know, Hua Chong and not the actual character Hua Chong himself. I kind of think like Shi Lian. Shi Lian's like, no, I think this is the real form of him. He wouldn't lie to me. <laughs> She lands like he promised me back in the OVA when I saw him next time it'd be his real self. This is his real self. And the Windmaster, you know, just is kind of like, well, why on earth would he show his real self to just some people like us? He doesn't realize who we are. And it's like, no, he does. Yes, indeed. I love that. Because uh, the Windmaster's only seen Hua Chong in his form as Song Long, right? Um, I will say, in the novel, the, the Gambler's Den, there, it, there was a lot more people. <laughs> A lot bigger gambling den, a lot more people. It's a little scaled back here, and you could kind of blame the animation for that. But damn, the animation can't help it because they use their whole budget on the Windmaster. Oh my gosh, the Windmaster looks amazing. Like the their expressions, there's just something like you can tell whenever an animation studio has their favorites because they just design them so well and they animate them so well. The Windmaster is one of the favorites of the animation studio, and it's exactly how I pictured them in the novel. Because in the novel, you know, it's not a spoiler because you all just watched the episode. But in the novel, they're kind of like, the Windmaster's kind of all over the place. And they're just like a little leaf in the breeze. They're like, well, I'm here, I'm here, but I don't know. Like, they're like, if I imagine an adult, an adult with ADHD is the Windmaster. They just can't sit still. And they're just always fidgeting around places, right? And so the way they animate him is perfect in this episode. And his expressions... Like, it's just his micro-expressions and how he looks and the way his face is animated. 
this studio really likes animating the Windmaster, which I'm really excited about. I, I like that they get so much attention here. And they look so great. But yeah, the ghost designs, they all look wonderful. And we have the guy... I think the weirdest ghost for me is the one that has the ear as the bow and they have an arrow like going through their head. How bizarre. That and the acupuncture ghost. It looks like the way that her face is, I know she's supposed to look like a geisha, but the way that her face is looks like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> and then her neck has all the acupuncture needles. It's all like stretchy. Those are probably my favorite ghost designs. They're the probably the kookiest for me, but there's some good ones in this. But yeah, so we have the gambler who bets... You know, he bets 10 years of his daughter's life, which is really bad. And he wins the bet against the Ghost King. But it, it's kind of one of those things where the story makes it a point that a lot of times gambling is just a pit, right? You start out thinking, oh, I, I won this one hand. I made a little money. I'll just keep going. And you just end up digging yourself deeper and deeper into a pit. And then you can't get out. And that's kind of like what he does where the gambler, like, he bets the lives on he bets his daughter's like 20 years of her life and her marriage and it's like whoa and you know that he wasn't going to win you can kind of speculate that Hua Chong let him off easy because as Shi Lian notes Hua Chong very well is capable of controlling the odds of the dice he has amazing luck so Shi Lian's like he let you off easy the first time as a warning now leave and then when he bet again it's like well now you've done it so and you know I honestly think I mean I honestly think that the hand was going to, the guy was going to lose and lose his marriage and his daughter's life. But then, doesn't matter. Lon Chon Chu shows up out of nowhere, just bursts on in, destroys the table. Uh, you know what this scene reminds me of? Before we get to Lon Chon Chu uh, destroying the table, I do like the frog design of the guy with the lily pad. I'm going through this episode and we see everybody surrounding him. And I love that the Windmaster shows up. And it's like, oh, hey, Shillian, how's it going? What's going on? He's like, well, this guy's about to lose his life. And Shillian wonders whether or not he should interfere. And the Windmaster's like, well, we kind of don't have the right to interfere because we're on Hua Chong's turf. So I do like, before Lon Chan Chu shows up and we get this point, I do love this episode with the chibis and the chibi versions of them. The chibi versions of the ghost ladies and the Windmaster in chibi form as they're getting like with makeup and stuff added. It's so cute. And I just, I love that the Windmaster's like, does anything look weird? Do I look odd? And Shillian's like, well, actually you look better. Oh my God, really? Give me a mirror. <laughs> I think the Windmaster is Alyssa Edwards where they're like, they're like, mm, where's the mirror? I look great, right? Is it right? Literally. Oh my God. I, I just, the way that they're animated in this is absolutely amazing but yeah so you're jinxing all my good luck and so then yeah the guy bets everything and that's right about the time that Lon Chan Shu shows up right that Lon Chan Shu shows up and I like the way Master's like look we're incognito nobody really knows who we are we won't be easily detected at all as long as Lon Chan Shu just shows up and meets us here in, in quiet incognito we'll be fine and then he just shows up and wrecks the table <laughs> What I was going to say is the moment that he shows up and wrecks the table, which is absolutely hilarious, the moment that he does that, you know what it reminded me of? If you've ever seen um, Helsing Ultimate Abridged, the abridged series that Team Four Star said, you have Alucard sitting there on his couch and he's watching Adventure Time on the, on the plasma screen TV, and this guy like kicks open the door and destroys the TV, and Alucard's like, that was a 70-inch plasma screen TV with Netflix. Can I help you? <laughs> And all I can think about that moment is that Lon Chan Shu shows up, wrecks the gambling den, and and you have Hua Chong up there being like, that was a 36 by 8 mahogany gambling den table that took years to make. So how can we help you, sir? <laughs> Lon Chan Shu is just a great, a great antithesis of Shi Lian, which is hilarious because you have Lan Chan Chu being the Prince of Yongin, and you have Shilian being a crown prince as well of Shanla. And so you have these two crown princes who could not be more different in terms of their personality. And it's really, really funny to me. But yeah, he's just like, and I love the Windmaster and Shilian are like, 
I like that the Whipmaster is slightly taller than Shelian in male form. They're like, they, they hold their set posture up very high and Shelian's just kind of like, uh, like I just, I love it. I'm not counting the head, the head gear either that the Windmaster has. And I just love that both of them are like, the Windmaster and Shelian are like, oh my God, like we have, we, we were here in disguise. They weren't even in disguise, but like nobody noticed us and you just, you blew our cover. Like, oh my God. <laughs> They're so embarrassed on his behalf. It's absolutely wonderful. But then I think Hua Chong is just like, he just likes seeing this moment because he's like, okay, Lan Chan Chu is going to bring out Xi Lian and then that's going to allow him to interact with his gege. And so then, yeah, I love that the two, like the Windmaster and Xi Lian look so embarrassed and they're, they're just so beside themselves. And then, yeah, Hua Chong, like the, the fight scene where like launch on you literally hurls the gambling den table at Hua Chong and he just smashes it to pieces and then shoots it at launch on you. Like he doesn't even raise his hand. He's just like, I guess go do something and breaks it apart and fires at him. And again, the only reason I think he does not let launch on you get shish kebobbed is because he knows Shelian would not like that. And so he lifts him up in the air instead. I like that you see somebody throw something at him, which is freaking hilarious. Like somebody just tosses stuff at him. It's great. And they're like talking about yanking off his pants. They're like, yank it off, yank it off. Oh my God, it's great. And he's like, no. And then they're like, well, what do we do now? How do we save him? And they bring in a new gambling table and they say, whoever can win the bet is going to win launch on Chu. And I like that the Windmaster's like, I don't know what to do. Uh, can you, can you gamble? And Shelian's like, my luck is actually really bad. <laughs> like I only roll snake eyes every time. And the Windmaster thinks of the very clever plan of like, oh, well then you just, we'll just bet the smallest. And then we'll win every time. And of course, when they decide to bet the smallest, that's when Shelian doesn't win, right? Of course, of course that's how it happens. But then, oh my God so smooth i love you know what the ladies remind me of the the ghost ladies that work for hua chong they remind me of the ghost women that are with wei wushin in modazushi i feel like just like modazushi had the ghostly girls that surrounded him um in this case hua chong has the ghostly women that are the ones being kind of the liaisons for him and in both cases both wei wushin and hua chong neither of them are interested in any of the women <laughs> They're just interested in the, the men dressed in white that they're trying to get their attention. You know, same thing. I, I feel like Wei Wuxian as the Yiling Patriarch is a little similar to Hua Chong. A wee bit. So I, I like that comparison. And then you have Xi Lian and La Wanji who are somewhat similar. A little bit. But yeah, I just, I love the ghost designs. There's the chicken ghosts, which are hilarious. I love the one ghostly girl that has the bone, uh, the bone bow. And then there's like a character from Beastars just randomly in the audience. It's great. I like this one like purple skin spirit that's always talking to the acupuncture lady. And he just looks like, he looks so creepy. He looks like the grudge meets a lizard. It's great. And then Shelian, Shelian's like, I'm going to try my luck. And then when Master's like, oh, Shelian, but you just said your luck was bad. What do we do? And Hua Chong's like, oh, hell yes. Yes, please. And then my favorite part is when he tries to do the shaking and the lady's like, oh, Hua Chong says that your dice shaking posture's off. And I get the feeling she's in on this. Like the lady that's his emissary, she is in on this. She's like, the ghost king would like you to go up so he can show you how to properly hold the dice. I'm like, she knows. She knows what's up. I like to think that she's in on the joke like all of us. But, oh my god. And the Windmaster's like, be careful, Shelian. <laughs> and he's like, walking to him, go up. And of course, Shelian's like, did I do something wrong? Do I really have bad posture? No! Hua Chong just wants to hold your hands. The last time you got to hold your hand was like on the, the caravan back in episode one of season one. So, he's, I mean, he's got to like touch him since then, but not, not hold his hand like this. It's so, I just, I love the, the curtains in between, the red curtains between the two of them, kind of like the curtains in between them back in episode one during the caravan. I just love it. And Hua Chong taking every opportunity. And the thing about Hua Chong is too, that you can tell he, he loves Shelian. You can tell he's just like, I want to be with you, but he's respectful of Shelian. 
So he's like, I'm just going to hold your hands. I'm just going to do this. This is enough for now. <laughs> and teaching him how to roll the dice. And then how smooth. He's like, oh, that one didn't count. I like Blue Master's like, how lucky. It's like, how lucky indeed. And so then, yeah, they take turns. The moment the theme song kicks in, I'm like, oh, my God. Y'all knew. Y'all knew it was going to happen. And Shelia thinks that Hua Chong is teasing him. And it's like, no. He's just taking this opportunity to spend time with you and to have this moment. He invited you. Well, you're in his big city, regardless of if he invited you or not. You're in his big city. And he's, you know, welcomes you into the gambling den. And he's put on this big show just for you, Shelian. I love the chibi versions. I love Launch on Chew's chibi just hanging there. And then you see the Windmaster chibi being like, the Windmaster's chibi is just like a, you need like a rainbow question mark. <laughs> Instead of a yellow being like, hmm, this is funny. <laughs> and yeah, I just, it's so good. And then Shelian's like, I don't have anything to bet against you. I don't have silver or gold or divine powers. And, and you know, he says 10 years of my life means nothing. I'm 800 years old. So at the moment though, if you guys go back and look at the animation, he's like, do I have anything worth betting? And Hua Chong's like, well, I don't care. He's like, what do you have on you? And Shilian's like, hmm. And he's like, oh, well, I have a half eaten steamed bun. And if you look at Hua Chong's face, if you look at Hua Chung's face with, when he says he has a happy and steamed bun, it's just like the sparkles in his eyes. He's like, oh my God, your lips have touched that. Can I have that? <laughs> just, you know Hua Chung was making out with that damn steamed bun for like an hour after this was over. I just love how sparkled the way they drew his expression. It's like, I need that. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And I love the moment that they animated that. I'm so glad that they did. And I was like, all I could think about was Hey Arnold, where you would just imagine if you've ever seen the show Hey Arnold, like Helga on that show is in love with Arnold. Helga is like obsessed with Arnold. And she has like in her room, you like open up the closet door and there's a shrine and there's like Arnold's head made out of bubble gum there and all these trinkets and like half eaten food surrounding by it. And that's her shrine to him. And I just imagine Hua Chong has like, Everything that he's possibly found related to Shi Lian. And he just has it under glass cases and he just puts the bun gently there and is like, I'm like, ah, I love it. I love it. Shi Lian's like, you really don't have to do that. It's fine. I also love Lon Chun Chu saying, am I really only worth half an eaten steam, a half eaten steamed bun? And somebody just lobs something at him. It's great. And the thing that was lobbed at him but was by the Windmaster. The Windmaster's like, shut up, they're having a moment. <laughs> it's great, but yeah, God. You know what? A part of me wants the plot to progress in season two, but a part of me is wanting to savor this moment. And everybody's like, oh, the, the Lord, the Lord of the house is like perusing with this random stranger. What's going on? And then, yeah, Shilian wins. And Lon Chun Chu gets rescued. I'm just now noticing there's a ghost there in green that has a noose around his neck that's like a tie. What the fudge, MXTX? What the fudge, animation team? And then, yes, Hua Chong comes down. He comes down to see Shi Lian. And Shi Lian's like, oh, oh, oh. And they're like, oh, the new appearance of the Lord of the city is so fresh and full of vigor. Like, he looks so good. And Shi Lian's like, oh. <gasps> And it's like Shilian getting all like flustered and him backing out and being like, oh, let's go launch on Chu. And he's like, I want what you owe me. I want the steamed bun. And then Shilian like gives it to him. And I just love that he hauls off with it and is like, we're having a party at my place. Come do this. And then when Shilian turns back, Hua Chong is like tossed it in the air. And then he like looks, he looks over to Shilian. Make sure Shilian is looking. He's like, oh, wait a minute. Looks over to Shilian, make sure he's watching. And it's like, <laughs> sexily eats bun and the best part is that she Lian watches him like eat the bun and he's just like he eats it and she Lian's like ah, no gotta go <laughs> i love he just runs out like bumps into everything they animate she Lian being flustered and clumsy so well like he's just running into everything and bumping around he's like i've gotta i've gotta runs in gay panic <laughs> And the Windmaster's like, hold on there, Romeo. 
He's like, You're, my face was as white as a sheet just now. I love the animation with the fan where the master's just like, oh my God, I can't believe all this work I've been doing. Oh my God, Launch on Chu, not Launch on Chu, but the Windmaster is Alyssa Edwards. And maybe that's why I love Alyssa Edwards. So maybe that's why I love the Windmaster so much. And then the Windmaster like gets on a Launch on Chu. I love the chibi forms. It's really, really cute. Okay. One thing that has to be said before we get to spoiler corners is, dear God, these subtitles, Crunchyroll, you, you, are you getting ChatGPT to write these? Like, I feel like you either need to release the episode a little bit later, we will wait to make sure these subtitles are right, because there was a lot of spelling errors in this episode. Like, I'm an English teacher, so... I noticed, and I noticed a lot in the subtitles, and I ignored it for the most part, but a couple times I was like, this is really bad. <laughs> like, you could have, you couldn't have done a proofreading before you submitted that. You couldn't have done a quick run through. This episode's 23 minutes. The episode's 26 minutes long. You didn't have 26 minutes to go through and make sure that these were correct. Come on now, interns, or whoever's doing these subtitles, you, you should have time to do this. So, and then... The Windmaster and Launch and Chu are like, okay, well, what are we going to do? And the Windmaster's like, look, you shouldn't just charge in and just bolt in the situation. And Launch and Chu's like, well, nobody else was. And the Windmaster's like, well, you weren't here to see what plan we were planning. So, and then she lands like, let's just not be conspicuous in the future. She land does a very good job of being like that passive aggressive kindness where she lands like, don't do it again. Or it could cause everyone trouble, particularly me. So stop. <laughs> Like, I feel like the way that Shelian handles those situations is kind of like I would handle that situation so I can relate. And then I like that we've got our trio together at the end. And they're like, well, now what do we need to do? And the Windmaster says, well, let's, you know, you're friends with, you know, Hua Chong. So why don't we just go right up and talk to him and ask him if there's been a heavenly official that's been kidnapped? You know, why don't we just do that since you guys seem to be chums? And Shelian's like, well, I don't want to, you know, lie to him. And, you know, I don't want to get up there and have to lie to him and make something up as to why we're here unless we just tell him directly. Right? And the and launch on Shu. I like that the Windmaster tries to be not necessarily deceptive, but a little bit more manipulative with the strategy. And launch on Chu's like, no, we can't deceive people. And Shelian's like, I kind of agree with you both for different reasons. And that is when we hear there's a ruckus. And they're like, he ran this way. And that's when Shelian remembers the boy from back in season one. The boy with the stuff all over him. Oh my gosh. Long Ying. Who after uh, Zhao Ying died had the freak out. Gah! Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh oh, what we gonna do? So he's back in the story. And Shelian's like, oh, we got to go find him. And that's where the episode ends. So lots of romantic stuff. Lots of romancy things. But um, I want to talk a little bit about spoilers for this part of the novel and do that. Um, so uh, I don't know how much spoilers I'm going to talk about, but I want to talk a little bit about it. So in any case, I am really excited by what is to come. Um, I can't wait for next week already. My thing is, um, without spoiling anything, I like I said at the beginning of this video, I know the contents of Volume 2, but I don't quite remember how much time we spend on each storyline and each part. So uh, we'll talk more about it in the spoiler corner, but not exactly knowing where the story is going next has me excited. <laughs> so what do we do about that? So yeah. Anyway, I'm excited to see what's going to happen, but we are going to talk a little bit about spoilers. So if you're not sticking around for that, then I'm excited to hear your thoughts down below. Um, what you all Dongwa only people are thinking so far. This moment was really great. I'm loving the Windmaster, loving Lon Chan Chu working with him, even though he's a himbo, loving it all. So uh, in any case, if you're not sticking around for Spoiler Corner, I hope you have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back again next week with more Heaven Officials Blessing Season 2. So yeah, uh, spoiler corner time. I, I was not 
lying when I said that I don't quite remember everything. I'm trying to jog my memory on everything that happens because I was looking at this episode today because I'm assuming we're going to get 11 or 12 episodes. So I don't necessarily want to know what's going to happen. I'm trying to remember, but I also kind of want to be surprised and see what we get as we go. But what I think I remember happening at this point is next episode is Long Ying and then running into him, running into Yin Yu for the first time, which is going to be such a trip. And he's going to be disguised as the waning moon officer and then going to Paradise Manor. And if we play our cards right, we might get to meet. I almost spoiled Ming, and I was like, oh, I don't want to say it. I almost said it. But and then I think we're going to get Ming in the armory next episode. And then we might possibly get the Paradise Manor um, with the calligraphy scene and then fire in episode four. We've got to get to Chi Rong in this season. We have to, because I think this season's going to end either at the end of the season or an OVA. It's going to end with the mausoleum and Chi Rong and Shilian being like, what the fudge? And then going into book three or going into book two, right? I feel like that's going to happen going into book two at that point. I feel like that's what's going to happen, but the, the season's going to end with us about to end volume two going into volume three. I think that's it, but we'll have to see. Because that would be quite a lot. You would have the Paradise Manor, um, Iming, uh, Yin Yu, rescuing. Oh, yeah, because we have to get through rescuing. We basically have next episode to get Yin Yu and go to Paradise Manor. And then episode four could be going in the armory. And then the next episode could be, episode four could be like the Windmaster and Shilin going through everything and the cannibals and everything to find the Earth Master. And then episode five could be the burning of Paradise Manor. Episode six, which would be the halfway point, would be when Shi Lian, you know, gets whisked away by Hua Chong. Then you have seven and eight and nine to get through. And then you have the rest of the season to get through Chi Rong and all of that. So I'm, I don't know how the pacing's going to go. I didn't think this episode would focus so long on Shi Lian and Hua Chong's moment but it's a big moment so and it was a big moment in the novel it took up several chapters so I feel like they streamlined a couple things in this like I feel like the the guy betting the hand I feel like he actually did bet and lose I feel like he did bet and lose and he like because that was the whole message was that he had the chance to win and walk away but then he gambles again and loses it all but maybe the censorship, they didn't want to show that. And so that's when they had Lon Chan Chu show up. I don't necessarily in the comments want a confirmation of what's to come because it's been so long since I've read the novel. I want to experience it as a surprise in this. But I do want to know in the comments if you all remember if there was things from volume two at this point in the story that was condensed. Like, I feel like they shortened a few of the chapters or moments with Lon Chan Chu. Um... <laughs> I really wanted them to like like be poking at him throughout the whole thing. They definitely shortened Long Chan Chu's part in here, but they wanted to do that to focus more on Shi Lian and Hua Chong, which granted, that's what we're here for, right? Although, oh my god, there were some definite um some oof moments in this, some major oof moments. One of which being just the entirety of Lon Chan Chu, right? Of being Lon Chan Chu. Because every time, like when the Windmaster puts Shi Lian and Lan Chan Chu together, and he's like, look, Shi Lian, Prince of Shanla, meet Lan Chan Chu, Prince of Yongin. <laughs> Aren't you guys going to be the bestest of friends? And the thing that sucks so much about it is that Shi Lian just puts on this happy face. Like, Shi Lian, when he says, oh, it's him, he remembers who Lan Chan Chu is. He's like, oh, that guy. Oh, so it's like Shi Lian remembers from like 300 years ago and it's just heartbreaking because we know like the truth behind the Gilded Banquet and we're going to get through all that when we get to Chi Rong, all of that, yes. And Shi Lian, you know, is so kind of heartbroken about it and he doesn't express any of that emotion on his face. He's completely like, nothing, not an emotion. And I'm like, Wh What? I just, uh, it's insanity, right? What an outrage. Just insanity. I'm like, I, mm, mm. it's crazy. And I, it's just so weird to look back now, knowing what we know in the rest of the story and just seeing this with Shilian and seeing Shilian 
be such an unreliable narrator, right? And then, but I'm sorry, the Windmaster, I, the Windmaster is one of my favorite characters in the story. And I had forgotten that because we haven't seen them until just in these last set of chapters from like volume four to now. So it's like, oh, I've missed them so much. And the way they're animated in this episode is so wonderful. Like there's, ex their face is so expressive. It's amazing. I'm like, oh, I just want to do screen capture after screen capture of it. Oh. But it makes me sad too, because now I'm like, we see the Windmaster so happy and we see like the Windmaster in their chibi form and everything. And I know when I see the Earthmaster, it's going to be like, oh my God, you don't know what's coming. I'm ready for the underground worm to chase Shelian and the Windmaster. I wonder how they're going to animate that. I'm ready for the worm monster. I'm ready if they do the cannibals, <laughs> how they're going to do that. And I'm just ready for the Windmaster to be absolutely amazing and then I feel like the way they animate them now, when we later get them spiraling, it's going to be very apparent. Because, yeah, the way they animate the Windmaster now, they're just fidgeting all over the place. And I'm like, when we get to the Reverend of Empty Words, the Windmaster's whole fidgeting is going to take on a whole new meaning. And oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for Chi Rong yet. I'm not rereading the Manhwa right now with the novel. And we are getting a lot of Chi Rong right now in the Manhwa. I'm not ready to see how this show handles him and his ridiculousness. I am, I'm just, oh, I'm going to fangirl so hard. And everybody that's Dongwa only is going to be like, why are you fangirling? Because, because, um, there was a moment here and I almost spoiled it in the reaction, but I was like, Gah! but, um, it's a moment where Hua Chong is just like when Shi Lian decides that he's going to come up and play the game. And when he shows up and decides he's going to play the game, there's like a shot of, there's like a close up of Hua Chong's um, like crotch as he says, he, as he volunteers, whenever she leans like, I volunteer as tribute. And we see, we instantly cut to Ming, like literally looking like Hua Chong's dick. I'm sorry, but I was like, wait, oh no. Because SQQLBH314 was talking about this in their comments. They're like, because in the last episode, the subtitle said they couldn't say a Ming for whatever reason. They just kept saying the deadly scimitar. And SQQ LBH through and four was like, yeah, in the Discord, we've been like, ah, yes, the deadly scimitar. It's rock hard and shaking for you, Shelian. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> like I'm flushing like a sailor. But then... I'm serious, as soon as Shelian wants volunteers to go up against the Ghost King, what do we cut to? We cut to a shot, and I know people are going to say, oh, well, it's, it's focusing in on, on Hua Chong's hand, and I'm like, yes, but right by him is the hilt of, the hilt of it being just propping right out there, just sticking straight out, you know? <laughs> no innuendos at all. Ah! Oh my god. I just, I love, I also love that, that Shelian and the Windmaster are like, wow, we were trying to be incognito and you completely ruined it, Launch on Chu. Thank you for that. I'm glad that you did that. But yeah, just the moment with Hua Chong and Shelian, I just, I, I don't know how they're going to do the kiss. I don't know how they're going to do the kiss in this. I really don't. I'm like, how are they getting past cens censorship with that? Because it is a legit kiss. How are we going past censorship? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> we have a long time before that, so we'll see. But yeah, I am a little bit sad that Lon Chan Chu does not have his himbo body, but his attitude definitely makes up for it. He has himbo attitude, which is fine. We were talking in the Discord about how, or in the comments about how Lon Chan Chu's, um, his design is kind of like San Long, only the brunette version, but what can we do? And then, yeah, just teaching him how to, teaching him how to roll that dice. Shelian's so innocent in this episode. He seems so innocent and, and just not understanding and just kind of like oblivious. And Hua Chong's like, okay. Hua Chong is the patience of a saint. But I'm not kidding. That's that steamed bun. That steamed bun with Shelian's like, do you want this? And he's like, yes, I do. Because, yeah, you know, Hua Chong's been making divine statues of him in the mountains for how many years now? And then... For Shelian to give him something, it's like, this is very serious. Serious business. But I just, I loved this episode. It was so wonderful. And then I almost forgot about Long Ying. I was like, oh shit, there's that kid. But you know what's interesting? If we think that Long Ying 
It's like, at what point did Bai Wu Sheng possess Long Ying, the kid? Was it at this point in the story? Or was it later? I, mm, no, no, no. There's so much in this season that I'm really excited to see. Um, mainly Hua Chong taking Xilin again from, from the hip, from the capital, Paradise Manor, um, Chi Rong, mainly Chi Rong. <laughs> But I know we've got a while to go before we get to Chi Rong, so I'm going to enjoy Paradise Manor. I'm going to enjoy uh, Yin Yu's appearance for the first time. I'm going to enjoy the Wind Master and all this. Um, there's not too much I can connect from the novel chapters I'm reading right now to these to this episode, but that may change next week. So we'll just have to wait and see. I just love that the Wind Master has always been there around Shilian and Hua Chong from the beginning, and now in the novel they're just like they're with them again. So. It's a fun time, but this episode was really well animated. It was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. So, but I mean, what else can we say? It's, you know, you had a three minute montage of Sheila Yen and Hua Chong holding hands and what else could we ask for? <laughs> Again, no clue what to expect as far as the animation goes, because from here on in, I have no idea. We've seen pretty much every shot from the trailer, so we'll see, right? But I am curious to know your thoughts down below, what you all thought of this episode. It was great. I really liked it, but I'm going to be pretty excited to see what we get next. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, I'll see you all next week with episode three of Heaven Officials Blessing. Bye!